Today, we're going to explore how sauerkraut is made. Sauerkraut is the result of a spontaneous fermentation. This is when wild microorganisms already present in the food product conduct the fermentation and no sterniculture is required. The goal is to create favorable conditions for the desired microorganisms, which in this case are lactic acid bacteria. Let's make some sauerkraut. We start with a jar, an airlock lid, a bowl, some salt, and a cabbage. Before we do anything else, we clean the surface and equipment and rinse the cabbage. Then we remove the outside leaves of the cabbage since they're more likely to contain microbial contaminants that we don't want. We also remove the core of the cabbage since its high sucrose content can be converted to dextrin, which would give the sauerkraut a slimy texture, which is also not what we're looking for. Next, we shred the cabbage in a clean bowl and mix it with non-iodized salt. The salt will do two things. First, it's gonna inhibit the growth of spoilage bacteria, and second, it'll create an osmotic gradient, which forces the water to be expelled from the cabbage. Water-soluble nutrients, such as the sugars from the cabbage, will gradually leach into this salty liquid known as the brine. This nutrient-rich brine will be the medium for the lactic acid bacteria growth. We then fill the jar. The cabbage must be completely submerged in brine to ensure an anaerobic environment. Finally, the jar is sealed properly using an airlock lid. This lid allows for gases to escape the jar while preventing oxygen and other microbial or fungal contaminants from entering. The jar is stored at 18 to 22 degrees Celsius and left alone for about 20 days in darkness. Now, let's take a look at what's going on inside the jar. Lactic acid bacteria outcompete other microorganisms because they are salt tolerant, thrive in nutrient rich environments, and quickly produce acids that inhibit other competitors, including spoilage bacteria, which is really important for food safety. Leuconostoc mesenteroids are the first major players. These are heterofermentative bacteria, meaning they convert glucose to lactic acid and other organic acids and release carbon dioxide gas as a byproduct. This CO2 gas escapes through the airlock lid and pushes out any oxygen that was initially present, which results in the anaerobic environment we're looking for. Elmacentoroids are eventually inhibited by their own acid. Luckily, the tougher, more acid-tolerant, homofermentative bacteria are here to take over. These convert one glucose molecule to two lactate molecules. Lactobacillus plantarum and Pidiococcus pentaceous continue the fermentation until few sugars remain. The final, most acid-resilient bacteria is Lactobacillus brevis, which ferments until no sugars are left. The final product will have an acid concentration of about 2.5 to 3%. At this point, the sauerkraut should be safe and delicious to eat. The low pH prevents spoilage and pathogenic bacteria such as Clostridium botulinum, and the anaerobic environment prevents mold growth. But to be safe, inspect your sauerkraut. It should be beige, tan in color and have no mold or no pink coloration. If it passes the inspection, pair it with a good sausage and enjoy.